They're far apart on the map. The coast of the Golden State, the Nebraska heartland. But they're so close when it comes to carving out legacies. So alike when it comes to larger than life legends and unforgettable teams. Different places, the same pride. The pride that comes from building a program that proves itself again and again over time. With football in the trenches, or floating through the air, pounding out the yards, or dancing through them. Both schools have winning histories. Both have enjoyed long reigns at the top of the game. He's all the way home! A perfect season, your national champions. Both teams traveled the road to success. And now it takes them here to prime time, where top-ranked USC meets number 14 Nebraska on Saturday Night Football. You are looking live at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska, one of the grand stages in all of college football. It's the number one USC Trojans and the number 14 Nebraska Cornhuskers on Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Good evening everybody and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger along with Kirk Herbstreit. So nice of you to drop by tonight. You know a week ago we were down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We saw a very good LSU team but you said afterwards USC even though they're idle deserves to stay number one. You got my goosebumps going here with that. You're looking live my man. I, I really did. I, I went back to last week and I thought LSU that's the strongest statement we've seen to this point but I thought it was only fair. I thought USC is the best team up to this point on paper. Tonight we find out really how good they are on on the road and in tough environment and after tonight then we can assess who the top two or three or four teams are in the country. Kirk what about Nebraska are they equipped to stay with the Trojans here tonight. Well absolutely the fact that it's here Memorial Stadium gives them a chance. The fact that they have a quarterback who's gone up against USC gives them a chance. The key is keeping this crowd in the game. Having something good happen early is going to help them keep the momentum and Sam Keller is the key. He has to avoid mistakes and give his team a chance to win this football game. There's a young man from North Hollywood, California, who's hoping for a big night against USC. That's running back Marlon Lucky. For more on that story, here's Lisa Salters. Well, Brent, Marlon Lucky wants everyone to meet the new and improved Marlon Lucky tonight. He was replaced as the starter midway through last season and admits he really sulked the rest of the year. He, in fact, he went into Coach Callahan's office in January and said, Coach, I quit. Callahan said, no way, we need you. Lucky decided to stay, but he said he was really unhappy, so unhappy that he made himself sick, missed several days of school in February. When he got himself healthy, he came back to school. He rededicated himself to the program, said he wanted to make a complete change, including his jersey. He wore number 20 last year. Now he's wearing number five. Why five? No real reason. Like he said, I just want to start over. Brent? Well, we will see him on the first possession of the night for Coach Bill Callahan, and Callahan hoping he can establish a run game early on against this USC defense. Now, Callahan and the Cornhuskers won the toss. Pete Carroll then had his choice and he said we're going to go on defense and by the way happy birthday to that man 56 years old here today and I think I should say about Pete Carroll for 56 years young <laughs> there's no doubt about that he has a lot of fun as a head coach at USC David Beeler with the ball on the tee he's from Anaheim he'll kick it off. Andre Jones and Courtney Grixby are back deep for the Huskers. Short and high. Fielded on the run at the 19 yard line. There's an alley, a crease to the 34 for Andre Jones. Well, to introduce us to the Nebraska offense, here's comedian Larry the Cable Guy. Back for revenge, the Cornhuskers turned to gunslinging quarterback Sam Keller. His favorite targets are going to be Terrence Nunn and Nate Swift. Coming out of the backfield, keeping the USC defense busier than Phil Spector's hairdresser, Marlon Lucky. And the big gun on the line is Brett Byford. Go Huskers! 
<laughs> and Larry the camera guy up in his luxury box here just to our left up behind the end. He's ready Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> but here comes Sam Keller. Many of you know the story Kirk and I will detail it for you. He started against USC when he was a starter at Arizona State. And here's number five Marlon Lucky jitterbugging for no more than a yard yard and a half against this USC defense. Well we've got to have some star power for the Trojans folks and here to introduce their defense their former great Reggie Bush. Now introducing the USC defense aka the hit squad up front leading the defensive line. We got Lawrence Jackson at defensive end and Cedric Ellis at nose tackle At linebacker. We got Keith Rivers Brian Cushing and Ray Maluga. Leading the secondary, we got Terrell Thomas at cornerback and Taylor Mays at safety. Keller's first pass is for a first down to the 49 yard line. A 13 yard gain. Harry Harris, the corner, making the defensive play, but there's Keller. That'll help his confidence. Well, that is a big throw for Sam Keller early. This is a fade stop thrown to the backside shoulder, a purify. He comes off so hard. Harris thinks he's going to get upfield, and that is just great timing there by the quarterback and his receiver. And Kirk purified another Californian. Yes, sir. Rica. Uh, he felt a little snubbed by the uh, Trojans. Missed game one. We can detail that a little bit later. From the gun, his second pass incomplete. And uh, Hardy, French Hardy, could not hang on to it with Ellison defending there. Britt Sam Keller, it's been pretty well documented his story but for people that aren't familiar with it it's amazing he was in Arizona State as a starting quarterback he actually went up against the USC Trojans his last probably highlight was being up 21 to 3 against USC in 2005 to have a second chance back at him he's waited a long time for this downhill in the second half four of his five That's picks right. came in there but now after the first down flashes out to the side his second completed pass and that's good for about four yards that time Todd Peterson is the receiver and Keith Rivers the outstanding linebacker back defensively. There is the timeline that Kirk referred to named the Arizona State starter on August 18th. Two days later Rudy Carpenter jumped over him after a meeting with Coach Cutter and his father. And so on the 24th four days after that he transferred up here to Nebraska. What a soccer and we're going to be talking about that throughout the evening. Here is third down sack taken down the Trojans mount that attack up front. There was no stopping the big fellas that time. Lawrence Jackson big number 96. Well this is confusion again. We saw so much of this last week from LSU. It's another third down situation. The great defenses take advantage of third downs. A zone blitz confuses the offensive line and Jackson one of the best defensive ends in the country is untouched an easy pathway right to the quarterback. Could be a long night if they don't block him my friend. <laughs> That's right. Let me tell you that. Fourth down now. Danny Titchener. Back to punt, number 97, Junior from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hangs one, Reed going to let it go, and it kicks inside the five. Oh, a beautiful punt by Dan Titchener, the junior. McEwen, the linebacker, down there to down it for him. Well, let's meet this USC offense now. Let's go back to the former Heisman Trophy winner, Reggie Bush. All right, introducing the USC highly powered offense. First up, we got the receivers. We got Patrick Turner and David Osbury. Throwing to him, we got quarterback Heisman Hofer, John David Booty. Up front, we got the bodyguards, led by offensive lineman, two time All American, Sam Baker. John David Booty inside the five yard line. Tight power eye, smash mouth football formation. And he does use the fullback right straight ahead who breaks into the clear. 25, 30, 35 across midfield, ridden down at the 45 yard line. And Bowman may have saved a touchdown. That is a 50 yard run by Stanley Hubby Lee. What's great here is to watch the center, a true freshman, making his first start on the road. He gets a great block. Christopher O'Dowd that springs the fullback Havili and Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, said, with all the talk about our great tailbacks, 
The MVP of this offense is Stanley Habihi because he can do it all out of that fullback position. And all of a sudden, Nebraska has a chance to pin USC back and a big gain on the first play for the Trojans. 50-yard burst. A first down at the 47-yard line for the Trojans. Their opening series. Bring into round motion, and here's Gable. He slips the first tackle. Open field, 25. And he's to the five-yard line. And Kirk, they got to go back to tackling practice. That's a 40-yard gain on top of a 50-yard gain. Well, Zachary Bowman, you're going to see a corner come off to the right here. He collapses in, and he lowers his head. And against a good tailback like C.J. Gable, he's going to have the ability to bounce to the outside. And once Bowman collapsed in, there's nobody left to the outside, making it very easy to see what C.J. Gable can do in the open field. One of many of these SC tailbacks. Here's a first down and goal. You look from behind, Stephon Johnson, who relieves Gable. He's number 13. They're five deep there, folks. Spin, nothing doing. Gained about half a yard. You no, know, we still haven't introduced this defensive lineup. I'm sure they're shell shocked right now. They're presented by Michelin. Let's go back now to Larry the Cable Guy. In the trenches, we got Barry Turner mixing it up for the Huskers. And linebacker, Nebraska's all-time leading tackler, Bo Rude. Right next to him, Corey McHugh. Don't mess with him. In the backfield, stopping USC's offense, we got Tierra Green and Courtney Grigsby. Black shirts! Get her done. The black shirts. The black shirts are in trouble here. Here's the throw. Touchdown just like that. John David Booty on a strike. That was Avili, the fullback, and that is his second touchdown of the season. How easy when, was that? We talked about LSU last. LSU just went four plays and over 95 yards, and John David Booty, first time he has to throw, he's in perfect rhythm because of the ability of USC to run the ball. That's how you take a crowd out of the game, four plays. Whoa. 96-yard scoring drive for the Trojans takes your breath away. 7-0 in Lincoln. Our scene earlier today, the folks at game day had a huge crowd here of some 13,000. And folks, that's the second largest ever for that uh, wonderful pregame show Chris and Lee and Kirk put on this morning. And that crowd this morning was making more noise than I hear right now from <laughs> 81,000 because the Trojans just took their breath away with a four play 96 yard drive. That's like a punch to the gut. You know they've been waiting for this opportunity against the number one team and four plays they went right down the field. Uh, here comes Grixby looking for field position. There's a penalty on this play. Grixby twists to the 26. So we've talked about Sam Keller. Let's take you back. Arizona State against USC a couple years ago. Kirk, you were there. We were we were there for game day, and I'm going to tell you something. USC was number one. They were on the ropes at halftime. Sam had, the, had Arizona State up 21 to three, and then it got a little bit difficult, Brent, in the second half, to say the least. Four interceptions, five on the game. The young man was celebrating in the first half, but not in the second. As the Trojans pull away, everybody says much more mature now. There'll be no celebrating as he settles in against these guys. His daddy was a fine football player at the University of Michigan. He was there when Bo Schembechler took over. First down and 10. And they'll see if Lucky can get anything on the outside. And he squirts free for a couple of yards that time, number five does. I thought it was interesting when you and I had a chance to sit down with Lisa to talk with Sam Keller. He said, you know, the whole process of going through being the man in Arizona State and then all of a sudden being benched and Rudy Carpenter being the guy and then transferring to Nebraska, sitting out all last year and running the scout team, not only did it humble me, I think it might be the best thing that, that happened to me to allow me to come here and get things in order and have a second chance to show what I can do as a quarterback. Pops can only stand and watch here tonight. Tried to blitz him, got picked up, got one on one beautiful grab at the 40 yard line. Keller gets it done that time with another terrific throw. Nate Swift, number 87 from Hutchinson, Minnesota, for 21 yards. 
And with Taylor Mays roaming in the middle of the field, it's important that Sam Keller, who was hanging on and hanging on here, waiting for his receiver Swift to break loose, he puts just enough air on it to his receiver to make the catch and give him time to get down before the safety Taylor Mays could come over. Keller now six of eight, and he has driven into Trojan territory here, down by a touchdown. Two tight ends, quick slant, and there is Big Purify again inside the 30-yard line. And let's check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brent, as you know, uh, Maurice Purify is just happy to be on this team. He led Nebraska in TD receptions last season, but had all kinds of off-the-field issues in the offseason, including two convictions for driving under the influence. Coach Callahan suspended him for the first game of this season, and Purify said he was surprised that he didn't get suspended for even more. He's just grateful that the punishment wasn't more severe. As part of his community service, he goes to a group home once a week and works with those kids. He said He's sorry that it's under these circumstances, but he's happy to do it. Indeed, and he's been a help here tonight as Cody Glenn, the big back, 230 pounds from Russ, Texas, twists his way to the first down at the 25. It's been very intriguing to watch Nebraska battle back here. Last year, Bill Callahan was torched by local media and by fans saying he was too conservative last year with the way he called his game plan on the road at the Coliseum. Tonight, they're mixing it up and, in fact, attacking the USC defense and being aggressive by throwing the football. And Kirk Marlon Lucky back in the game gets the inside handoff. And he is just shy of the 20-yard line on the first and ten. There's a spring to the Cornhuskers offensive step. Now they are matched against arguably either the best or the second best defense in the land according to the experts. The only chance you have to be able to sustain drives and move the ball against this USC defense. Ten starters return from last year's group for the SC defense is to mix things up and to keep them on their heels and keep them guessing a bit. And right now that's what Bill Callahan has done. Ellis is matched against Byford. Keller gets time. Another slant pattern to the 11-yard line. Nate Swift, the junior from Minnesota. Twist for this time. Another first down, and the chains move. You've got to be impressed with number nine, folks. Sam Keller is calmly moving the ball against this D. Sam Keller is in rhythm. That's an important word tonight for both quarterbacks. Get back and get the ball out. It's, a very, it's very, very difficult to get pressure on Keller because by the time he hits that fifth step, the ball is out. And right now, he is in great sync with these wide receivers, and they're attacking the SC corners. On this drive, the offensive line giving him time. Here's Lucky trying to slash, kind of tripped as he tried to break free. Kyle Moore, the junior from Georgia, coming over behind him. Well, it's a lot of fun to watch this offense of Bill Callahan's. He brought the offense from the Oakland Raiders. Think about the type of personnel he inherited, option personnel. It's taken a few years to get the quarterbacks and the receivers and the running backs, and more importantly, longer offensive linemen. But now you're starting to see, after the third and fourth year, starting to see his kind of players. Swift is to the left of the formation. Keller goes back to Nunn inside the five-yard line. And there's the first reception by the senior Terrence Nunn of Houston, Texas. But the other thing that right now Sam Keller is doing is he's doing a great job of reading the defenses. He's not predetermining where he wants to go with the football. He's simply reading the defense, reacting, finding the open man, and taking the seven-yard gain and the eight-yard gain. Great job of using his eyes. Ten of 14, Keller is. That was none one catch now for eight yards. Third down and short. Lucky's the running back. Keller's going to throw over the top high. Nunn's hands and incomplete. Here comes fourth down. Decision time for Callahan. He can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. He's down seven right now. Does he take the three? Keller's going over to the side. An NFL coach would take the three and go on about his business. <laughs> You're right. There it is. Here they come. Get on the board. Callahan has to be happy with number nine so far now. Alex Henry, redshirt freshman. Jake Wesh is the holder. This is big now for the Huskers to get on. There's a penalty flag. Starting defense, number 58. I think 
think he said disconcerting. Is that right? Yes. Malaluga was doing a rumba out there in the middle on somebody, folks. A little verbal tattoo, and Pete Carroll said, "What are you talking about? You can't do that to me." Malaluga probably taking some of the the fun that he has on the practice field into the real game and trying to make that Nebraska offensive line flinch and move by yelling out different. Uh, Different signals and, and different uh, verbiage to try to get them to flinch and get the penalty and it backfired on him. You don't see that call very often. And Glenn is the running back. Phillips is set up in front of him for a power run. Tifa Teller over to the right. They'll run Glenn that direction and he is jumped on that time. Number 41, Thomas Williams. They like to bring Cody Glenn in as a power back. He's been battling through some injuries and he's healthy enough to go tonight. When you see number 34 in there, or even number 19, the true freshman Castile, they're looking looking to run between the tackles and lower their shoulder and go back to old school Nebraska football. And that would be Keller right straight ahead if it's really old school. <laughs> Where's Tommy Frazier? Said he's handing it off. Got a touchdown. Cody Glenn, the junior from Rusk, Texas. Mike Keller is happy for his son in that offense. They got a huge break on that penalty, though. Right? Any way you can take it when you're playing USC, any way you can get it. We talked about at the outset of the broadcast, Nebraska has to have some things go their way early to keep this crowd in the game. We got red balloons flying all Into over the, the place. We got a couple. <laughs> Kirk, talk about how important it is when you're down seven to the number one team to come back and tie the score. Especially Brent, the way they did it. USC was pinned inside their own five yard line, four plays, they went right down and scored. Nebraska struggled, and all of a sudden Sam Keller found his rhythm and got Nebraska going in the right direction. Here's your touchdown. Mauro Luka couldn't stand him up. And now it's the Trojans' turn. Fielded at the three by Vincent Joseph. Sure to the 20 yard line. <laughs> Chauncey Washington is on the field now for the Trojans. John David had plenty of time and he goes to the sideline and David Osbury who caught five passes against Idaho. He's a red shirt freshman. Let's talk about the receivers. They lost so much last year when a couple of the fellas moved on to Sunday football. Well, I think they lost probably the most productive wide receiver combo in the history of this school with Dwayne Jarrett and Steve Smith. And now they're relying on some young receivers. Patrick Turner, number one, is back tonight, but they lost a boatload from those two young men. Turner is number one. He was in motion that time. Now he'll catch his first ball of the night. Slips the tackle. Cuts back to the inside. And that's what he brings to the attack. A first and ten. Deer Green converted running back finally making this up. But that is the man that John David Booty needs back in the line. Let's go back to this graphic here. Yeah. Kurt. If you're talking about 6,000 yards over their career between Dwayne Jarrett and Steve Smith, Turner's had a, you know, a, a little bit of a slow start, but now he's become the go-to guy for John David Booty. But other than that, it's a very inexperienced group. Well, ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, will return with the second quarter after this message and a word from our ABC station. So many great matchups here tonight. For example, the defensive line number 93, and Dominican Sue, the nose man, matched against the first freshman, true freshman, to start at center ever for USC, Christopher O'Dowd, a fine, fine young player from Arizona, but a young man with his hands full here tonight. 93 gets down in the nose, and there's another freshman on the field for USC, folks. Joe McKnight, number four. He's off for his first play, got the swing, dropped, incomplete pass. The freshman from Louisiana. And Kurt, take a look at the Pacific Life game summary for me. Well, it's been a little bit of everything. If you're just joining us, USC jumped out and were pinned deep in their own territory and went the length of the field in about four plays. It looked like they had control of the game. They took the crowd out of the game, but give Nebraska a lot of credit. Bill Callahan was criticized in the way he attacked USC last year. This year at home, 
with the quarterback at Sam Keller. He is aggressive and going after the USC defense, and that's why Nebraska's been able to even it up. Desmond Reed. In the backfield, John David throws a perfect strike there for the first down. Far side reception by Osbury. David Osbury here tonight. He's from Moore, California. Will Farrell, familiar side at uh, <laughs> USC games down there. I can't help. I just look at Will Farrell and I laugh. He's just one of those guys, you know. <laughs> Think of him on ice skates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Washington. Play fake to him, and John David's got a lot of time to go deep down the middle. Incomplete. So he probed deep that time, but uh, Marillo, number five. Now, the one thing we want to point out about this secondary, Kirk, this is a much tougher secondary for Nebraska than last year when we were in the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Well, last year, that was really the Achilles heel and the weakness in that area. This year, with Zach Bowman coming back, they're much deeper now. They are, you know, that's something that Kevin, ha Kevin Cosgrove, the defensive coordinator, wanted to try to address. And that's something they're a lot more confident about coming into tonight's game. He's one of those guys nervous about signals because of the Belichick five. Washington on the twist. And Nebraska will give him no more than a yard. On that sideline shot of Kevin Cosgrove, you may have seen a late signal. That's what he intends to do all game long, as late as possible. So no one upstairs or down on the field can pick up an indicator or a signal that he has. What they'd all rather have, of course, is the electronic device. And won't the NFL go to that next year? Is there any reason why defensive coaches can't talk to the man calling the signals like they do the quarterbacks? Come on, you can afford it. Third down now and nine for the Trojans. Booty again with time and it dropped. Incomplete as the call is Patrick Turner. It would have been a sensational grab by the junior. It would have been a tough catch for Turner to make, but what I'm seeing all of a sudden is, isn't it amazing when a team's offense generates some momentum that it affects the defense and the way the black shirts now are moving around and getting USC into a third and long where it's much tougher to execute. That time on that series, Nebraska's defense was flying around with confidence. There's another penalty, folks. Line judge threw it. Grixby taken down at the uh, 20. That was pretty dangerous when he didn't call for that. It's circuit. a lot of fun. It's kind of a little chess match we have going on back and forth tonight. Yep. <laughs> Coming in underneath for the first and 10. That man was wide open to the 39 yard line and he is now working his H backs into space, Kurt. And there's the second catch for Sean. Well, this is very, very important when you have. Oh, they're going to have 15. They're going to have 15 yards for a penalty there at the end against USC off the back into the play. But when you're trying to attack this group of linebackers, it's tough to find windows. What a good job of clearing out the linebackers. They actually went vertical and it opened it up underneath for a nice gain there by Erickson. Here's yeah, the penalty. Let, me, let me correct myself. I said it was shot. It was 26. Dan Erickson, the senior from Omaha. And uh, isn't Keller moving this offense? And now the 15 tacked on. And Kirk, they've got that ball uh, in Trojan territory again. Erickson stays on the field to the right. Quick hitch to Purify. And Purify picks up a quick five on a soft corner that time. There are a lot of coaches who believe when you see this, there might be a run play, but if you see a soft corner like this, simply take the snap and take five yards every single time. You can get rid of the ball. The lineman might think it's a run play called, but the experience and the veteran leadership of Sam Keller that time get, gets rid of the ball, and now it's second and two. Our eye, Lucky, going to follow the fullback, and it is blown up that time by number 49, Cedric Ellis. Uh, if there's a better nose man around, uh, you know that young Dorsey down there now, LSU way, those two, wow, those two fellas are something. Well, he is so powerful. Anytime you talk about Glenn Dorsey and Cedric Ellis, 
you always have to use not only the power and the strength, but that explosiveness, the ability to get through a gap and, and penetrate and disrupt a running play. And that's exactly what Cedric Ellis did right there. And Keller and the Cornhuskers need eight yards to move the chains on this one. Hit on the release, got it off in time, a gutty throw to Swift under pressure. Keller knew he was going to take a lick. A 19-yard gain, and that's as gutty a throw as you'll see. But Cody Glenn doesn't do a good job of picking up the blitz coming from the outside from Terrell Thomas off to the right. He whiffs and misses. Thomas gets in high to Keller, and what a great job by Sam Keller. He knows that Thomas is coming. Still, look at that blow to the head. That could have been 15 yards very easily. Gets the ball off, and I'm telling you, Sam Keller is feeling it. He's looking good, and here comes Lucky, right side, just short of the 20-yard line. Ellis is on the outside helping out on that play this time. Let's see. You start to really pull for Sam Keller when you, you learn more about his background. Lisa's talked about it. You and I have talked about it. Let's not forget that this Nebraska offense lost Zach Taylor, who was the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year a year ago. So not only the pressure to come up and try to Play great after leaving Arizona State, but filling the shoes of Zach Taylor as well. Lucky's his running back to the middle. And there was a safety blitz on that time. Keller and Ellison exchanging a little trash talk over there on the side. Keller tonight has been something. Sam Keller has really gotten the team back into this football game. When the game didn't start off well, he's come back. He's, he has really been in sync in the timing with the receivers. He has spread the ball all over the field. And there's the toughness. And that's why his teammates have really fallen in love with his leadership. He's an in-your-face type of guy. For, a, for a, a, an offensive coach in Bill Callahan who's been so aggressive that time I think he tried to take advantage of the aggressiveness that he's called the game maybe try to catch Pete Carroll off guard nothing else it gets the ball a little bit closer to the middle and gives him a chance to get three points and take the lead which will keep this crowd and keep this momentum in favor of Nebraska Alex Henry the redshirt freshman with a 37 yarder behind the goalpost here it comes Going to bring it right in on you. Nebraska leads for the first time tonight. One of the rare times they've been a huge underdog in Lincoln. They trailed by seven. Ten unanswered for Nebraska. And back here in Lincoln, the number one team in the nation trails by a field goal in the second quarter against Nebraska. Nine minutes left. One thing to keep in mind about USC folks they have not been unbeatable on the road they've lost two of their last three road games Corvallis and the Rose Bowl and here they are in Lincoln Canale to the five yard line and Joseph Joseph fumble Trojan scoop it out 35 40 they get a great break to the 45 yard line the ball was picked up by Malcolm Smith, a linebacker on the return team, and he ran it to daylight. Are you kidding me? I just can't believe that just happened. Nebraska gets another break that they want to try to capitalize on. The ball lays on the ground, and give credit to Malcolm Smith as a linebacker, picks up the ball with the awareness, and picks up some valuable yardage for the USC offense. And now they're in Nebraska territory. And he'll try to drive the Trojans to a go-ahead score here if he can. Gable is his running back. Turner's off to his right. Gable with a hole in the middle, breaks free. And he has stopped at the 30-yard line. Zach Potter back defensively, but that's a 15-yard gain. This is a zone play where the line is going to just stretch this defense. Gable is going to come back and then look for a seam. Very, very common play that's run in college and, and also in the pro level. And it takes a back with great vision and great patience. And C.J. Gable that time stretched it tonight, found the crease, and got right through it for a big game. Dale Thompson and Brad Walker on the field for the Trojans in this set. Full back in, toss play. Gable looking daylight again. 
And he's inside the 20 yard line. That's another first and 10 for the Trojans. Oh, this is this is Steve Sarkeesian saying, you know what? We're on the road. We've been a little bit cute with the passing game. Let's get back to basics. This is old student body left here by USC. Gable gets around the corner. Some great blocking. And again, Stanley Havili, the big fullback who's been all over the field with a great lead block for Gable. And a boy named Sue caught him from behind, number 93. First down and 10, though, for the Trojans. On a cutback block, here is Stefan Johnson. Johnson gives him a burst, and it'll be first down and goal. Now they're stretching out the Nebraska defense, and this time they come right back to the inside. And if you're the safety, Larry Asante, you've got to make that play. He's a physical safety. He's right in the hole, right there to make the play. But what great instinct that time by Johnson to elude him and get upfield to pick up a big gain again to the Trojans. Johnson stays on the field. Number 13 will take the toss. In behind the block. Can he cut it in? No. And he is down at the two yard line where it will be second down and goal. Zach Potter there again. He's been very active defensively. We've seen Gable tonight. We've seen Chauncey Washington. We've seen Joe McKnight. When I talked to the SC coaches, they say Stephon Johnson is probably our most natural ball carrier. He's not quite up to par when it comes to pass protection and catching the ball in the backfield, but when it comes to simply running the football, number 13 is their guy. Still on. Havili is the fullback, set right in front of him. Havili straight ahead for a touchdown. They go to the up back and he busts into the end zone. So he's caught a touchdown pass and now he's rushed for one. And the youngster from Salt Lake is a real force for the offense here tonight. Can't say it enough. Stanley Habili, the fullback, a high school tailback, comes in as a freshman. And USC doesn't run the spread offense. They're more traditional, kind of the West Coast offense. They, they like to spread you out, but they like to keep that fullback in there. He's the most important player to the offense. David Beeler. For the extra point. And that's right down O Street down here in Lincoln, folks. And Beeler, who has stepped in this year as their kicker, has the ball on the tee. Jones and Gritsby are back. And USC, for the second time tonight, goes ahead. This time 14-10, and we've still got 6.50 left in the first half. Long injury delay, of course. Fielded at the two yard line by Grixby, the defensive back. Grixby looking daylight, 20, slashes back to the 29 yard line. And Marlon Lucky. Rivers wraps him up at the 30 yard line, number 55. Well, Keller for a while was really in throwing rhythm, and you wonder when they're going to get back to that. I think they're going to have to, and, and I think it's all about the play calling, and you don't want to just throw every single time, but I think it's about balance. It's about mixing things up, which Bill Callahan has done a wonderful job of here in the first half. It's very rare to see USC's defense on their heels, but Nebraska there for a while, we saw them control the tempo of things, and that's where they're trying to get back. Purify is off to the right and they come back with Lucky again and Rivers comes over to the other side and again he's in on another play defensively over there along with Cedric Ellis. Well, balance is very important. Breaking tendencies is very important. Can't say it enough. Last year they had 36 runs against USC when they were out at the Coliseum and only 17 pass attempts. And of the 20 first downs, 18 of the times they went on first down, they ran the football. Tonight, it's a whole different story in the way they're attacking this defense. Hurry up was the call from the coach. Empty backfield on third down. Keller on a short drop, incomplete. He was under pressure that time trying to hit Sean Hill. 
Well, we keep talking about him, but it's worth mentioning that when you can get pressure without having to blitz, this is way this is the way you get the defense off the field. Look at Cedric Ellis just bull rush by for the, the center. And by the time the cornerback Keller hit his last step to get rid of the ball, Ellis was right in his face. Byford's a senior. He was on his back there. Now Alabama and Desmond Reed is back deep again. Titchener. Hangs one high. There's the fair catch signal at the 27 yard line. So first down and 10. John David off a play fake. Throws sideline. Incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. So first down and 10. Johnson stays in. Booty under pressure. Flicks it off. And that pass is complete to Hazelton. Near the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Woody, that time, looking at his first receiver, primary receiver, looks for the second receiver, his third receiver, everybody covered, but instead of panicking, comes over to his right, is able to just dump the ball off and not end up losing yardage or making a huge mistake. A good coverage again by Nebraska. Avili, the fullback, in front of Johnson as they settle in on these two backs. Here comes Johnson. Got a big gaping hole. Runs to daylight. 35. Brought down around the 25 yard line. The Trojans threatening again. A 32 yard run. Brent, they have been showing this look quite a bit with motion. They've been running bootlegs and nakeds off of this. The motion that goes this way allows the defense, you're gonna see, they're gonna start to flow this way, and it gives them a hole to come back and run the football. But look at all the motion. See, he's been faking that ball and coming around the corner for a lot of play action passes. The defense has to respect that. That's why a big running lane, not only from the offensive line, but the secondary is confused on the backside. Cosgrove's defense needs to stop here. Pump fake from John David. Got time back to the left side. And complete to the 20-yard line that time. And so Kevin Cosgrove's defense is under fire here. Here is the defensive coordinator. Worked for Barry Alvarez up in Wisconsin. Before moving down here to join Coach Callahan's staff. It's the football coach right there. He loves to put a defense together and go out there and compete. As you touched on, did it for so many years at Wisconsin and now doing a great job here in Lincoln. Late signal, the personnel from USC were on the field. He's having trouble with Havili, the fullback. Havili is set right in front of Johnson. Here's Johnson, big hole in the middle. And Kirk, they found something here with Stefan Johnson. He looks to be the best back that we have seen in a while. Well, Christopher O'Dowd, a true freshman center, came into this game, and we all wondered how he would handle this. But right now, he's playing very, very well. Jeff Byers opening up a hole, pushing it down. Rachel comes around the guard. Brent, I think we could have handed the ball off to you on that one, my man. You could have picked up six or seven yards. That six, was a huge hole. Six or seven inches, maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> They're at the... Uh, 12 yard line, first down and 10. Johnson stays on the field with Havili. Sue is doubled complete to the seven yard line. John David Booty snaps it off. You know, in this world that we live in with the spread offenses and four and five receivers and empty backfields, I got to tell you, it's so refreshing to watch this offense that Steve Sarkeesian is in charge of for this USC offense. We've been seeing it. A lot of times it's two backs, it's two receivers. It's very conventional offenses, but you know what? They still get four and five wide receivers out on almost every single play. To be able to do that, it puts a heavy priority on the fullback and the tight end to be great athletes. Turner is slotted to the right. They come back, big hole, touchdown. He walks in. They sent motion. The middle opened up. 
Christopher O'Dowd, the center, you pointed it out, along with Rachel and Byers, the guards. And look at this hole. You've got a true freshman, ladies and gentlemen, playing center, number 61, O'Dowd, and he's playing a great first time. He's been on the road, playing a great game, and Jeff Byers opened up another huge hole for this USC offense. Stephon Johnson likes those holes, doesn't he? He sure does. And Beeler tacks on the extra point. Well, there we have it. But USC took control midway through that second quarter, and they'll take a 21-10 lead into the locker room at Intermittent. Let's go down to Lisa with the happy birthday, kid. Thanks, Brent. Well, Pete, you guys got off to a fast start, and then they put up 10 unanswered on you. What was going wrong during that period? Of time? Well, we, we we had some field position, a horrific mistake on, on mishandling that ball down there, and, and stuck the field position totally in their favor. We couldn't get out of it for a while. We finally did and got moving again. Now, how'd you get your rhythm back? Well, we, we just we actually ran the football pretty well. We decided let's go see if we can run the ball and get a little rhythm in that manner. We've been sitting around so long, we, we get, felt like we kind of got cold, so now, that's how we did it. Now, it was good to see Alfred Rowe get up and smile and coming yeah. off, but it wasn't so good for Vincent Joseph. You were talking to him. What what happened? He got hit in the neck. Yeah, he got hit in the throat, and, and, and it affected his larynx some. That's what they said. All right, so well, we wish the best. Okay. It's not a, neck, not a neck injury or any of that kind of stuff. All right, that's good to hear, and happy birthday All to right, you. Thank you. All right, Lisa, thank you very much. Now, let me see if I can get this right. Let's go to John Sun. <laughs> Craig Team, Doug Flutie for the Bud Light Halftime Report. Take it away, Big John. Law and order for the number one team in the nation. Down, they score 14 unanswered. They're up 21-10. A little Husker weather closing in right now. See him huddled under that blanket, 53 degrees, dropping. Wind out of the south, southeast, 10, 20 miles an hour. But uh, I think the Trojans running game is just just heating them up down there <laughs> the way they're going Kirk I yeah. want to tell you the last two times USC had the football they did they just went back to saying we're going to get physical we're down 10 to 7 and they've been able to run the football and just open up huge running lanes for Stephon Johnson and that really is, is what turned exactly. this thing around and yeah, they went right up the middle behind their freshman center the two veteran guards over there and uh, 172 yards they rushed for up the middle very very very, very very impressive and you know for an all Offensive line coach. I'm sure he feels good. Coach Rule, the big offensive line coach, the way SC took command there. But now it's second half. Nebraska gets the ball, and Sam Keller's got to find that rhythm that he had in the first half. Well, Nebraska gets the ball to start because remember, Petey Carroll went on defense after Nebraska won the toss and deferred. Grixby rolls off a hit, and he is down at the 28 yard line. Sam Keller, a bright spot for the Cornhuskers, 16 to 24. For 172 yards, did not turn it over. Drops it off to Lucky on a little middle screen, and he's to the 33-yard line. And our Pacific Life game summary from that first half looks this way. We have already talked about the rushing numbers put up by the Trojans of USC, but consider Nebraska only 26 rush yards, Kirk, and uh, yet they pass for 172. If you would think that USC might be up 21 to 10 on the road, and John David Booty would have 43 yards passing. I'd be shocked, but they've been able to control the game on the ground. A little flanker screen read beautifully by Kevin Ellison, number four, the junior from Englewood, California. He just jumped on that play. But over the years, in these last five years of dominance by USC, this typically is what happens with Pete Carroll. He gets in at halftime. He has seen everything that the offense has to offer as far as formations, as far as play calling, makes the proper adjustments. And for the most part, they typically dominate in the second half. And that'll be something that Nebraska will have to try to overcome. Facing a third down, Nebraska was four of ten. They were stymied on third down in the second quarter. So here they are facing another one. Keller sidesteps away. Can he run for the first down? Going to drop it off. Complete. He's got his running back out of the backfield, Glenn. And that's a first and ten. And Keller was very aware that he probably could not run for it and uh, so he was able to drop it off before crossing the scrimmage line what he did a very good job there is baiting Mawaluga and making him come off of the running back who he had in coverage Cody Glenn once he baited him right there he forces Rivers up in Mawaluga and Glenn's left all alone and I'll tell you what happened on the back end of that is Rivers takes another big shot from the USC linebackers and he gets back up and he's ready for the next play. Snapping close to midfield, deflected in the air, intercepted on the deflection. 
Picked off by Terrell Thomas, the senior linebacker, number 28 on the deflected pass, the first turnover of the night. Give Kyle Moore the assist here and Thomas the interception. Anytime a quarterback gets back quickly and you don't have time to put pressure, everybody knows you're taught to get your hands up. 84, Kyle Moore gets his hands up the way he's taught. And Terrell Thomas gets into the passing lane off the deflection. Big turn of events here for the Trojans. Washington will open at tailback. It won't be long before we'll see Stefan Johnson, who was the rushing star of the first half 79 yards but right now it'll be Washington remember they had a lot of success running the football and usually that's where SC will come back a lot of times to go play action when you think they're gonna run he's gonna throw on first down Turner bottles it incomplete it'll be second down and 10 on that play so they came out and threw on first down so that is vintage Steve Sarkeesian when it comes to play calling everybody's thinking boy USC they're really getting physical running the football he's one step ahead of you when it comes to what he wants to call he knows that Nebraska's thinking that they're gonna roll up their sleeves get physical so he goes the other way and decides to throw in a little wrinkle there by play action pass on the first call I like it especially after the interception number 13 is back in. He'll be the tailback. Osbury's the motion man, and here comes Stefan again. Same gaping hole, and he busts inside the 15 yard line. We can't say enough about Odod, the freshman center, Rachel, the right guard, and Byers, the left guard. Just blowing holes open in the middle. Great stuff again, Brent. The action goes this way, and it opens right up. Watch the secondary, watch the linebackers. They get confused. They all go one way. The line pushes them to the left, and it's a nice big hole cut back there by Johnson. What great vision that Johnson is shown tonight. Drew Radovich, who drew a start, jumping ahead of Charles Brown, was that right tackle number 60, throwing a key block too. And now suddenly the Trojans are back inside the 15 yard line. They'll flare it now to Johnson, who's surrounded and will lose yardage on this play as Bo Rood, number 51, is over on the stop. Tough to run that into the boundary with a defense like Nebraska's who had the personnel over in position. They just simply outflanked USC. They had two or three defenders waiting that time on Johnson in the short field. Now his first catch of the night, but he lost six yards, so he's been much more effective running right up the middle, number 13, setting him behind Booty here. That's Turner, number one in motion. Booty rockets out that way and underneath to his tight Davis rumbles inside the five yard line. Fred Davis, the senior from Toledo, Ohio. Steve Octavian tracks him down. Same action. This time you're going to see them boot off of it. This is exactly what they've been having success running with. It's same exact look for the defense. They're thinking, uh oh, here comes the run again. And he comes out to the outside and he's looking for his receivers. And this is called taking advantage of stretching a defense horizontally and keeping up guessing as to are they running up the middle or are they going to the outside? That was the plan for SC and it's working perfectly. Play action, Booty rolls, throws for the DZ touchdown. Comes over to Anthony McCoy, number 86, a sophomore tight end from Fresno, California. And young Anthony. And the Trojans put up three unanswered touchdowns here on the Cornhuskers and start to pull away. That, my friends, is textbook on how to attack this Nebraska defense. Great mixture there, but it was going back to the bootleg action. Sometimes they'd give it on the zone. Other times they'd pull it out and throw it to the backside off the naked. Beeler nails the extra point, and it is 28-10. The Trojans starting to show everybody why they're ranked number one. Will there be a new order in the Big Ten? We're about to find out. Beeler drives one back inside the goal line. Quixby is coming out. Breaks a tackle, but there's the kind of hit that you love to celebrate on your 56th birthday, right, Lisa?
First down and ten. And Lucky is cut off at the pass and gives ground for about four yards. And Cedric Ellis, you know, we talked about it in the uh, in the first half about Pete Carroll coming out, and it's the Friday walkthrough. No, oh, this is how he gets ready before the game. Get? This oh, is the night game. before the game. Oh boy, he's we've seen down. him. At, we've seen him at the, uh, at, you know, the day before the game, but he that, came out now. That was 55 yards. Yeah, yeah. that way. Stretched the wing out on Friday. Shows up on game day, ready to throw it. Second down at 14. Intercepted. The second pick. And out of bounds at the one yard line, Kyle Moore just snapped that one out of the air, and suddenly things are backing up for the Cornhuskers. Well, this is a zone blitz. This is confusion. This is Pete Carroll. This is what he loves to do. He's going to bring a blitz here. He's going to bring a blitz here. And a defensive end is going to drop right into the passing lane, and Sam Keller never even sees him. The defensive lineman, you see it all over college football off the end. Instead of rushing forward, he comes off, and the whole purpose is to get into the passing lane, which is exactly what Kyle Moore did. If you were playing a video game, you couldn't have drawn that up any more perfectly than Pete Carroll just called that up. Perfect timing by the Trojan defense. Now let's see if they give Washington a chance to score. Will they throw on first down play action? First and goal. And Washington dives across the end line, end zone, touchdown, USC. People could talk all they want about, well, they didn't pass the ball enough tonight. Where are those wide receivers? Where's the passing game? You know what? You're on the road in a tough environment. You're down 10 to 7. You have the ability to take a game over with your defense, and you're running the football down the throat of the Nebraska defense. I'm, I'm Pete Carroll. I'm fired up right now. And here is really good news. Here's what the coach wanted to hear. Vincent Joseph is fine. He's moving, talking. The report from the hospital is bruised larnix. So it is indeed a happy birthday when you hear that that young man is fine and obviously he'll return with the Trojans to Southern California after this game. And now the Trojans, Beeler putting the ball on the tee on the 30 yard line. Set to go again. Jones and Grixby back. 35 10. 28 unanswered points by the number one team in the country. Mm, field one yard deep by Jones and coming out. And he is stoned at the 24 yard line. And Sam Keller now will try to get this offense back in rhythm. And uh, Lucky is out to the 22 yard line and this gives you an idea of how powerful this offensive line has become for the Trojans as the game moved on. Uh, they, they have taken control of this football game up front and you know the other thing that doesn't show up on that graphic is the way the defense has also been able to step up and I think disrupt the timing that Sam Keller had earlier in this game with his receivers. They're controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball led by Cedric Ellis on the defense Defensive side. Cody Glenn is next to Keller here on second down and long. Snatched. Nice grab, but a little bit short of a first down by Purify, and uh, he gets back and makes a grab. Well, coming into this game, one thing Nebraska had to do is keep the pressure off of Sam Keller, give him time to throw, get him back, and so he could avoid making mistakes. He's turned the ball over a couple of times tonight with interceptions. Give SC all the credit in the world because they've been more physical up front, and when they haven't had time to get to him with a sack, they've gotten their hands up, and again, it's about disrupting the timing with Sam Keller and his group of receivers. Led by Cedric Ellis, the nose man, 49, being doubled on this play, incomplete. So it'll be fourth down and short. Sean Hill couldn't quite hang on. When you get down 35 to 10 to any defense, let alone Cedric Ellis and the Trojan defense, and you become predictable. Boy, is it tough to stay out on the field for Bill Callahan and the Husker offense. They know what's coming. Desmond Reed back deep to uh, to return this punt. Fair 
catch is signaled for at the uh, 38 yard line. Well, let me see what uh, my man, Mr. Herb Street, has come up here with top five. USC, oh. LSU, no it, argument there. Oh, you jumped. Uh, I, I moved Florida up just because I was. Hey, I, hey, I, I was blown nice away call today. from Morgantown, West Virginia. What happened to the Mountaineers? I, I, I'm telling huh? you, that's my, Come as on. of right now, that's my top five. And I'm anxious to see. And he votes, folks. I, I, I do. So. I'm anxious to see all the people out there who moved LSU to one after seeing this display. Now what? Now what happened? Let me jump it back. Okay. All right. Now <laughs> I'm going to jump it back. Because this is on the road. It's a lot, a lot different to go on the road and be this impressive. John David Booty's got all day. Fumble. Turner grabs it back, I believe. And that's the whole reason I reserved judgment on flipping LSU and USC last week is because I, I want to see USC challenged, and I think they've answered you know, the bell tonight. You know, folks, there is no way that it's fair the way they do this. We all know there should be like a 16-team playoff, but I'll be gosh darn if it isn't one of the more exciting things that I've ever been around. And, and I must say, it's part, part of it's luck. But every year we come down, we've got these great arguments. There's going to be upsets down the stretch. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Every year. Every year it seems <laughs> that teams that look like they're not going to lose always seem to find a way to lose. There's, oh, Stefan bust free again. They have found their number one running back here tonight. Inside the 30 to the 28 yard line. 25 more yards here, Kirk. 25 more yards. The offensive line, I can't say it enough, led up front by a true freshman, Christopher O'Dowd. Nice job of controlling the line of scrimmage and the vision. You're going to see this more and more from Johnson, his ability to stretch it and then find the crease and hit it and pick up big yardage. Now we know why PD didn't want to change that center after the Idaho game. Said made yeah. some bad calls. Right. You know, he said physically he was fine. And the young man's out of Arizona. He was one of the top preps. Christopher O'Dowd. Here's a play fake. Standing tall. Complete. To the 17-yard line, Havili. Yeah. Boy, Havili is such a danger. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, Havili's, you know, he is a very valuable commodity to this offense. But I'm going to go back to O'Dowd because it's it's a very common thing that you see with USC is true freshmen playing for USC constantly. And I ask, I always ask him, how do you do that, especially at center? That's a complex position. They compete against one another, good against good, so hard in spring and summer. By the time they get into a game, it almost the game almost slows down. Yeah, Mama Luka, he'll work yeah. out of the scrimmage right. now. He'd be happy to get in the pit against some of these fellas. First down and ten. Incomplete. And that might have been a pick six there. Bo Root was lurking back there on John David. Looks like they're trying to work on the passing game because, uh, you know, coach said at halftime that, yeah. that was the weak part of this uh, of this offense. They lost those two big fellas to Sunday football. They've got talent. Patrick Turner, certainly the junior. Hazelton can move. Kirk, he's yeah. only a sophomore. Osbury's a redshirt freshman. I think before Brad it's Walker. all said and done, Ronald Johnson, I think, will emerge to become a go-to guy by the time they get ready for conference play. The true freshman out of Michigan. He's their future, I think, this year. Washington cuts in zone, battles, and he's just short of it down at the two-yard line. Speaking of freshmen, I know you watch young Ryan Mallett for the Wolverines, and I'm told that when he was at the Elite 11 camp, he's a fellow, big fellow out of Texas, they nicknamed him Big Tex, and that's what the Wolverines, well, Big Tex had himself a day for the Wolverines. Well, well Big Tex looked about as confident as you can look as a true freshman. I don't know if that was Notre Dame's defense that made him look that confident, or if that's just Ryan Mallett and the way he conducts himself when he's out in the field, but he did a, a nice job of leading Michigan to a big win today. How about Chauncey Washington comes in? I'll take a few carries, coach. Here we and get one into the end zone. Washington's your eye back. He's got it. Stretches. End zone. Touchdown, USC. Strikes again. Well, on their last five possessions, if you're wondering why Mike Kirk Riley. has them number one, USC has scored five touchdowns here. You know, I, I'm really anxious to see not the, only the running game, but the wait, wait till these young receivers get in sync with John David Booty and they become more balanced because teams are going to load up to take away the run and that's going to play right into the hands of John David Booty. 
Tech on the extra point. We got to have a little Saturday night soundtrack coming up from the Nebraska side with Barry Turner, Pierre Allen, and Chris Brooks, Brandon Johnson. We'll have that a little musical relief. Well, next week there'll be less blocking. You know, we got to get like rid of the singing, and we got to block and tackle. Yeah, we, we do. We do got to do that. That's a little bit more my speed, right there. I hear that. I like that. We're going to be hearing from him with uh, Lisa here right after this return by Andre Jones as he uh, tries to find Alley left. A little bit of a daylight. Cuts back. Spins to the 31. First <laughs> down and 10. Incomplete and deflected away beautifully that time by. Mayaba, Kaluka, good job number 43. Kaluka, Mayaba from Hawaii. He's a junior. 42 to 10, you might think, much like last week. I don't know what it is about you and I showing up to games, but you might think, what is there to, to learn from? What's the advantage at this point? It's so early in the season. You've got to get ready for conference play. You've got to keep battling. You learn more and more about each other in these kind of situations. Keller in trouble. Incomplete. And uh, one of my spotters tonight, Brian Mobleson, reminds me that that uh, Louisville, Kentucky game was on ESPN Classic. And my question is, what did they know in advance? Oh, <laughs> good call. <laughs> it's a toss up to see which one will be the instant classic this week between well, Arkansas. They've already had it. Arkansas. Oh, yeah. They've already taken the airtime. Yeah. Yeah. What a game. You knew going in that Brian Brom. And Andre Woodson would be going back and forth. Brown number one, or is Woodson number one of the two? I think it's going to depend on their their workouts and how they continue to play the rest of this year. But I know Todd McShay told us today that those are the top two. The way the NFL is looking right now, those are probably your top two quarterbacks. Yeah, Todd does a good job too, tracking those fellas. And uh, did he hang on to it? Yes, he did. At the 37-yard line, but not enough for a first down. Hardy, number seven. He came with Zach Taylor on the JC into uh, Lincoln. And Mayaba doing another number down there. So number 43 is a backup. We go back to one of the key plays of this game. Hard to pick out one when it's 42 to 10, but when Malcolm Smith, the freshman linebacker, true freshman from Northridge, California, picked up that fumble on the kickoff when uh, Nebraska was ahead and now freshman Joe McKnight they sent him in to return a punt here's the youngster from Louisiana and uh, apparently he didn't touch it well, now it's finally picked up by a uh, by a corn husker but the young man's got to learn you know raise your right hand and wave it and <laughs> get out of there <laughs> ESPN's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. So we are back 42 to 10 as we start the fourth quarter. It will be Cornhusker football. Drop it off now to Glenn. Three Trojans smacking down at the 26 yard line. Mayava, who's again. All over the field. He's, he's making the most of it. He backs up Keith Rivers at that linebacker spot. And uh, so the uh, the senior from Hawaii. This USC defense just keeps coming. And I think it's their passion for the game. They love the game a lot like their head coach. And they just continue to fly around. But at least Nebraska picked up some yardage. Oh. On the slant. Pushed out of bounds inside the. 15-yard line, Cody Glenn, the junior from Rusk, Texas. That's a uh, that's a 12-yard gain on that play. And that was the first time in a long time we've seen Nebraska's offensive line create a bit of a crease in the USC defensive line. A nice, it's a nice valuable room there for Glenn to cut into. Comes Glenn and he is hauled down 
from the backside. Mayava's all over the place. Number 43. I mean, uh, hey, and we're talking about second and third stringers out there on the field for Peter Carroll. Now, if you just talk about depth on this, but, but you, you know, Pete Carroll and, and the intensity that he has and that he demands. I don't care if it's a walk-on out there, and I don't care if it's 42 to 10 or 7 to 3. You better play with the same intensity and the same attitude, no matter who's out on the field. And I, I think every coach demands that. Every coach wants that. But I think you really see that from USC every single time we go out there and we watch them play football. Here's Keller backing up and uh, complete to the five, but that's short of the first down. Right, they're going to say hit the carpet before he was able ah, to secure okay. Somebody had a good view of it down there then, and they ruled it incomplete, and that was the uh, reaction of the crowd. I think Callahan thought it was complete. Yeah, I think the crowd looked up on the screen and they thought it was a catch too. Can't quite tell from that angle. Get a better look here. He lays out and yeah, I'd say it's incomplete. Yeah, I think the ball once it left his hands, ball was it bounced off the turf. Third and eleven as we begin our countdown to number one complete. Just short of the end zone, down at the one yard line. That is a first and 10, and there is Purify. Purify early in the game was the go to target for Sam Keller. We haven't called his name here for a while because Nebraska hasn't had much to talk about, but he was hurting Terrell Thomas in the USC corners to the outside in the first half, and that time comes right over the middle to the area that's usually vacated by the linebackers there for a big game. Brian Cushing, the injured linebacker, checks in just in time on that play as Nebraska bucks in for a touchdown. Cody Glenn, number 34. Well, there's many of the uh, loyal fan base here. They haven't left. Nope. These are some of the most loyal fans in the world, and they're not headed for the exits. We got 12 minutes to go, and uh, they want to see if there's a miracle at hand here tonight. They still believe, don't they? Alex Henry, redshirt freshman from Omaha. Tax on the extra point. A little bit of life for the Cornhuskers yet. We'll take a break. Trojans, meanwhile, expected they might see, might see an onside kick. They pulled nine up, but they do leave two return men back here at Memorial Stadium. Here comes Henry. We're going to take it deep. Fielded at the one yard line. And out to the 28 is C.J. Gable returning. And this has got to be a huge disappointment for Kevin Cosgrove as to how uh, the defensive front has played. What a strike. What a throw that was. Pitch and catch to David Osbury, the redshirt freshman. 21 more. A beautiful pass play. Well, there's the timing that I think you're going to continue to see John David Booty de develop with this young group of wide receivers. This time, Osbury, he throws this ball well before Osbury comes out of his break. Ball is thrown right there to the outside shoulder, and Osbury just gets one foot down right there. For what, a, what a throw. And But that's going to continue to get better and better with these receivers with Booty. Andre Jones is the corner on that play. There's a play fake. Standing tall and spinning back and making a grab at the 33-yard uh, line. And uh, there again, they're just uh, playing pitch and catch, and that's Brad Walker. But it looks like Steve Sarkeesian has decided to say, guys, we, we've gotten to the point where we know it's 42 to 17. We're in the fourth quarter, but we've got to be able to still throw the football and keep them off of loading up to the line of scrimmage. And John David Booty all of a sudden getting an opportunity to have time to throw and showing what he can do when he does have that time. This might be a little Heisman Trophy time here. So with the game safely in hand, they do a little work on the passing game, and uh, now they get uh, close. Washington uh, will carry the ball. 
Our aerial coverage tonight was provided to you by Goodyear for precision and performance. Get there on Goodyear Innovation. Be some Goodyears fired up at Loudon tomorrow up in New Hampshire where the chase starts at 1 Eastern on ABC. What is the, what is the chase? 12 uh, the 12 highest finishing drivers coming into the last 10 races. And it's all and about they, points in the last 10 right, races. Exactly. So now we're it, starting from scratch? No. Jimmy Johnson is seated still higher. He okay. won six races. Okay. So he's seated number one. He has a he has a point lead on Jeff Gordon. Complete. And uh, swinging back out of the backfield. Fred Davis being very active as the tight end here. They're just coming right down the field with uh, John David Booty now. He's 19 of 30 for 144 yards. He's thrown two touchdowns and no interceptions. That package that they put on tonight that we've seen, they've run the football with a lot of success right up the middle, and then they've gone play action with the bootleg off of it going the other way, and they've had so much misdirection with motion and bringing receivers from the backside that it's just been wide open all night, whether they've run or whether they've thrown. Now they bring it back down. Dives for the pylon. And touchdown, Bradford. So Allen Bradford, the sophomore, gets into the act. And uh, watch this dive for the pylon here, folks. Well, he's probably the most physical of their nine backs. <laughs> I'd say. You know, they, he is. Allen Bradford is, is the most physical back that they have. Looks a lot like Lindale White there in his uniform, but he's able to push it to the outside. Actually gets around the corner, Jones, and showed a nice burst there for a 230-pounder. David Beeler. USC comes into Lincoln and they've hung 49 on the Cornhusker. It, it, it occurred in a Yankee Red Sox game and you just had to kind of chuckle. I guess everybody chuckled except Euclid, the uh, Red Sox first baseman. We, we will show you Chamberlain. I don't think he's given up an earned run yet for the Yankees. He's been, uh, he's been extremely effective and Red Sox and the Yankees, certainly the greatest rivalry going in baseball right now these days. And uh, hanging on, he, he took a took a pretty good lick, but uh, kept on ticking, didn't he? he didn't uh, Taylor Mays couldn't knock it loose. 21 yards. Uh, just a tremendously impressive performance by. Uh, by USC complete complete yeah, team yeah. as it was LSU I should point yeah. out <laughs> last week uh, this defensive front there's none getting into the action and that'll be a first and ten and Huskers move the chains here with six minutes to go. Well, I think, I think it's been impressive because of how they did it. LSU was at home last week, and they jumped on top of Virginia Tech, and they never looked back. It's a totally different set of circumstances for USC. Coming on the road and playing a traditional power like Nebraska, getting down 10-7, to 7, this stadium was rocking. They were going crazy. USC kept their cool the way they always do. Came right back. What was it, 28 unanswered points? They've dominated the game ever since. So I, I think while LSU and what they did at Virginia Tech was – very inspiring and I think everybody walked away from that thinking LSU's the real deal. I think those of us that wanted to hold judgment and see how good USC was, I think that was a smart decision after now seeing what they could do tonight on this field on the road away from the Coliseum. They're the number one team in the country. It's been a long time since Nebraska's beat the top 10 team now. Remember, you got to go back a few years to that win over uh, Oklahoma. And I, if you look at their schedule, I don't make them a lock. To win the Big 12 North, uh, there were a lot of people who said, "Oh, no matter what happens, you're not." I'm not so sure of that, and uh, I want to take a, take a look at the schedule because there's uh, Lucky in underneath. That's short of a first down. But uh, Nebraska's road schedule. Look over there on the right. They go to Missouri. Okay, could be pivotal. They'll have their hands full down in Austin. We know that. Got to go into Colorado. Coach Hawkins might be putting it together. Iowa State, Oklahoma State, Texas A&M, 
Kansas State all come in here. So that's well. The, the problem is if you lose to Missouri on the road, Absolutely. then you lose to tiebreaker. So now you now you're you're down a couple games. So that that is a huge game in the Big 12 North. And Peterson again. So Todd Peterson. He's a graduate student at Grand Island. Last year you might remember the Coliseum. He caught that fake punt. Yeah. Coming out of that game in the first half. Absolutely. It was uh, the Huskers' big play down there. Five minutes to go here. 49-17. Number one with a cushion. Now, you know, I mentioned Solich. And uh, what was their offense like compared to uh, this going back here? This is this is when I used to actually dominate the video game era. This is the what was this mid 90s little Tommy Frazier to Lawrence Phillips little pitch here. That's NCAA 96. You remember that one for you gamers out there. And now when well, you look at the technology, how far we've come in about 10 years. This is Bill Callahan's offense. It's the West Coast offense now for Nebraska. Nice technology, throwing the ball around, recruiting different style of players. That's a big that? change with EA Sports, isn't <laughs> That's it? That's right. Complete. Peterson in zone. Bus touchdown. Todd Peterson brings him down the field, 20 yards for the score, and he caught three big passes on that drive against the basically the second unit for the uh, yeah. for the uh, It's it's still it's a matter of still fighting, trying to build some character in this Nebraska team, and they have not given up. They just continue to try to give it everything they have and get points up on the board. So you're right, Todd Peterson, big target. He's about 6'4", 210 pounds. Found a crease there and made a catch and then showed a little toughness there to get into the end zone. Here we go for two. Cover back in the shotgun. Had a great time and drills it in there. He drilled a strike for that one. That's Sean Hill. Side kick and uh, ball is coming loose, but I think the Trojans quickly, quickly cover it up. It gets tougher and tougher as Mark Sanchez comes in for USC. Well, Sanchez, who is back from a broken thumb, uh, handing off on uh, first down. Mission Viejo, uh, California, so we can uh, bring down the book on uh, John David. John David Booty. The one thing, I, one point I want to make about Sanchez, you might recall that Mitch Mustaine transferred from Arkansas to Southern California, and uh, he is unable to travel because he's a transfer and he can't play till next year. But Coach Holt told me that the one thing Mustaine did, he's running the scout team, is he gave him a terrific look during practice coming in here. He said that the, the youngster can really throw and that they got big time timing against him and uh, he praised him and of course next year you know how Pete Carroll is jobs are wide open so uh, Sanchez and uh, Mustaine it'll be an interesting it, duel. It will and I'll put my money on number six. I think Mark Sanchez has got a great future for USC. Now this is going to be third and long as there's John David's numbers for the night 19 of 30 144 yards two touchdowns and uh, no interceptions they gave him a couple late drives of throwing the ball and uh, well, the one thing is they're still going to need you know Jarrett and Smith the replacements have not been found yet let's, no. let's tell that one that's it might be a small negative because they got so much talent there but, but when, that, you, when you run the football there. for over 300 yards you don't have to have a great night producing as far as the passing game but, but you're right I, I think everybody's going to want to see as time goes on can Osbury and Turner and Hazelton and Ronald Johnson can they be the receivers that they're used to having at SC you know, not gonna let Sanchez air it out. They just hand it off to Bradford and uh, bring up fourth down. And uh, Pete Carroll at 49-25. He's just content to uh, let that clock keep on ticking now. Well, I'll be, I'll, tomorrow, folks, I'll tell you one thing you're gonna see. Every producer director covering an NFL game is going to lock in on the defensive coordinators and the hand signals. I mean, you're going to see some signals tomorrow around the NFL and that uh, that Belichick story. 
And of course they've got a huge one coming up against uh, the Chargers. Wait next the uh, the punter drops one down inside. Kicking game also looks solid. <laughs> if they find a way to beat UCLA, they're playing Ohio State for the championship. Florida's not going to be there. Ohio State was going to be in that game. Now I know that's you know the fifth ifs and buts for candy and nuts every day would be Christmas. But it does show you how dominant the Trojans have been as Glenn gets free and is brought down from behind. Rather than trying to stop Vince Young, if Lindale White can pick up three more inches, they win that championship. True. Instead of stopping 10, it's a little easier to try to get to three and, inches. And Gene Chiswick, the defensive coordinator, uh, to who was coordinating the Texas defense, he got a big win over Iowa at Iowa State today in Ames. Uh, that was one of one of the upsets after losing a couple times. Yeah, that was big. But I, I think I don't know if people really understand how difficult it is today with scholarship reductions, how tough it is to get on a run like this that USC is enjoying. When you can go six or seven years and you don't allow complacency to set in, you don't allow any problems at all where players start to worry about the NFL, they start to worry about draft status, they start to worry about agents. I think it's an epidemic in college football. It's one of the biggest challenges that big time programs face when they have success. And SC, I've, I've been, they're able to just kind of block it out. I'm chuckling because yep. I think it was Barry Switch who once said, if you coach at USC, you drive past more good football players on yep. the way to work than I've got in the whole state of Oklahoma. Absolutely. <laughs> You're right about that. Here's Lucky. Diving for the uh, pin on the spot. Might be a little bit short where they uh, they finally bring it down. Well, today's Chevrolet players at the games. And uh, we have got to go with Johnson. 11 rushes for 144 yards, and the young man throwing the ball, dropped by Hardy, incomplete. Third down, coming up. Keller's trying to fling one more into the end zone. He's got one touchdown tonight, late, and a pair of costly interceptions. Well, we really thought that the storyline would be Sam Keller and what he could do throwing the football. And you know, I don't know if he expected to come in tonight and throw it 53 times, but. There was a point in this game where he had USC on their heels and really thinking about what to do next. Tom Osborne didn't throw it 53 times in a month. In a season, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> There's a first down. Lucky. And incidentally, in recognition of uh, their fine efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Final minute here. And the Trojans now 2-0. They beat Idaho and uh, get a week off and they go on the road and took care of business. And of course tonight we began the countdown. Peterson sprinting in zone touchdown again. That's his second of the night. That's 18 yards. I've just been impressed that Nebraska hasn't just shut it down. I mean, they are trying to compete. I know the game's out of reach, but it's 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 the it's the principle of being early in the season and trying to get your players to buy into that concept that guys, I don't care what the obstacle is, we cannot give up. That's an important thing for a team to grasp, especially early in the season against a team of this caliber. Got a man open. Didn't pick him up early. And, uh, and then threw a little bit high under under some pressure. Well, I know that uh, Mark Beam is uh, also on the athletic staff here. And I know that uh, Mark, who has done a superb job, is uh, one of the candidates for the Pittsburgh athletic director's job. So we uh, wish him well in that, uh, in that quest. This is a very well-run athletic department, not just a football like we pointed out earlier. I got to go to the stock car race, man. I got to get on the road. Okay. <laughs> I gotta go see my guy Tony Stewart and the rest of those rascals. See what they're up to. See, and I've never seen a NASCAR race oh, we, in person. Oh, we'll I you. understand it's it's something to see. It is. It is exciting. Little well, Sanchez and the Trojans bringing it down here. Another W. 
Good way to celebrate your birthday, huh? Picked it up, handed it back off. Lost the yardage that time. That'll do it. 49-31. Trojans prevail. Bill Callahan heading across the field. So once again, the Trojans win one and will stay number one. So next Saturday night, tune in at 8 Eastern for either Washington State versus USC or Iowa at Wisconsin where Kirk and I will be. For Lisa Salters, Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brett Musburger. We hope you've enjoyed Saturday Night Football on ABC. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, everybody. The Trojans win it 49-31. So long, everybody.